Welcome to the Production Talk podcast with me, Jan of mixartist.com.au. In this podcast series, we celebrate the modern way of producing music. We want to talk about all things related to songwriting, recording at home and music production. So if you produce your music at home, this is the place to be. Please subscribe and recommend this podcast to all your friends. This is the Production Talk Podcast, Episode 17. Today I've got a special episode that um, took its idea from a conversation that I recently had with my dear friend Matt and uh, also from my experience over the last um, couple of days when I took my family on a weekend getaway. I just wanted to explain to you what's been going on in my life and I think there's a few things that I learned about myself so I thought I'd share with you because all of this has to do with my productivity and the, the way I operate. So I thought this might be useful to share. We finally got out of lockdown. Um, we're now in a transition period at the moment where we don't have all the free movement back yet. However, we were able to finally get away for a weekend and uh, so I took my family to the beach and uh, but then on Friday it was really difficult for for me to actually get ready and and to, to get on the road because there were just so many things in my mind I was still dealing with some business cases I was dealing with or interacting with a prospective new client which was quite important I was dealing with revisions on older mixes that are still ongoing and need finishing And of course, you know, things about my podcast and all kinds of things were on my mind. And it was really difficult for me to step out of this and take a break and get away for the weekend. Um, but I already knew that if I would, it, it will be worth it. And of course it was. So uh, here I am now back from from a weekend. Uh, and I just noticed how many things have changed in, inside myself, in my take on life, in, my, uh, in the way I deal with people. Because uh, in all honesty, by the end of last week, I was a little bit, well, I don't want to say burned out, but I was stretched to the max and I was really busy and my mind was just constantly occupied. I was keeping too many balls in the air, uh, juggling life. And I guess I was really ready for for a vacation. But I didn't notice that. I, I didn't realize this about myself I, until I actually did it. And um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that now that I'm back from, from a long weekend, I see so much clearer. Uh, I already had one productive morning. I knocked out so many jobs already. It's now Monday about midday. And uh, the first couple of hours of, of today were more productive than uh, an, an entire day usually if I'm stretched to the max. So what I'm saying is I think it, it was really worthwhile because I now feel like I'm a better version of myself. I see clearer, I think clearer, I'm more switched on. And that's exactly what I owe my clients. And uh, I think that's a good attitude towards life that if I want to give my best to my clients, I first need to, to look after myself really well because if I'm, if I'm exhausted, if I'm burned out, uh, I'm just not the best version of myself and therefore my clients wouldn't get the very best result from me. So this is just a, a little observation about myself that I thought I'd share with you um, because I believe that having those breaks um, makes me uh, a more creative professional. It makes me... Um, I think better, I'm more switched on and I'm definitely a lot more productive. So I get a lot more work done in a lot less time. And I think this is something that some of you could be struggling with as well. And uh, just want to share with you how much of a difference uh, this weekend getaway made for me. So what exactly is it about this weekend that that recharged my batteries? Um, obviously, you know, a, a change of scenery is uh, is beneficial all the time. But I think a key element was that we had next to no mobile phone reception, terrible internet, and I spent very little time on my phone and on the internet. Instead, I played with my kids. Uh, we hang out with friends. We drank a couple of beers on the deck. We played guitar. We went to the beach. 
lots of fresh air and uh, went for a swim and all of those activities are basically activities that engage your your brain in a different way and uh, i noticed that um, while i was just you know getting up early walking my dogs my dog in the morning uh, at the beach you know my mind was just completely empty there was just nothing occupying my mind i was just enjoying being here in the moment and soon enough a good idea suddenly popped out of nowhere and while i was uh, walking my dog suddenly ideas came to me about how i want to progress with the podcast and i had a couple of epiphany moments about things in my business that i'm not doing the best way yet and where i need to let's say update my terms and conditions uh, to make my life easier for myself and also for my clients and uh, you know a couple of ideas about my website that uh, when i'm so busy in my day daily treadmill usually I wouldn't have those ideas and they just come up, came out of nowhere and I found this uh, quite amazing how the human mind works that if you really manage to get your mind off it suddenly the best ideas come and that was just my observation again this weekend and uh, yeah I hope that uh, this is something that um, you resonate with so what I'm trying to say here is that if you sometimes feel like you're stretched to the max and you're exhausted and life's just getting too much, um, then it is time to look out for oneself. Um, I think we should all keep a, an eye on each other as well and r remind ourselves that every once in a while we need a break. And uh, every time I go on a break, it's a really, really good investment because I don't lose time, I actually win time um, because I'm so much better afterwards. So unfortunately, I can't go on a, on a weekend getaway uh, all too often. Uh, it's just not possible all too often. So I was thinking about a few other things that are just a bit more practical in day-to-day -day life. Think about other things that can give you the same um, relaxation so, or no, that can give you the same benefit. That could be just maybe going for a morning run or a yoga session um, or meditation. Maybe it's just a walk. Maybe you can go for a swim. Uh, see what's possible. But I think the activities that our brain needs to, to operate better are all uh, related around physical activity, lots of fresh air, um, a certain absent-minded state where, you know, all the busy things in life are just not present with you. And that's best experienced in nature, in, in my opinion. And you know what? Now that I think about it, I believe that, I hope I remember correctly, but I believe that about a year ago, I was walking um, the, the bush with my kids uh, on a quest to explore every waterfall in the local area. And on one of those walks, the idea of running this podcast came to me because I just wanted to give back to the community and, and all the amazing musicians and actually add some value to, to, to your life. And that's my take on it. And I think this came, this idea came to me when I uh, wasn't thinking about work at all, but just enjoying nature. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let me just also draw the opposite. So um, things or activities that, that will prevent these moments of clarity are usually anything that's related to computers, screens, phones, you know, where you get fed content that's been cooked up by somebody else, where somebody else sort of writes your agenda. Um, I think that when you, when you stare at screens and when you're occupied with technology, um, certain elements of our brains are just tied in and that is good sometimes. That's exactly what we need to do in our professional lives these days. But it can't happen all the time. And when there's free time, I think that's just the time when we need to switch those devices off to allow our minds to be at their very best. And uh, yeah, that's my story that I want to share with you about productivity and, and clarity. Okay, so I think I really have to bring it back to music production. So it was a little detour uh, into the mindset of productivity and what I learned from myself by just observing myself. But I think this has to do a lot with uh, music production because I think all good music comes from a happy place. And that's usually not a place of stress, of trying super hard, of fighting uphill battles. And that leads me to a conversation 
that I had with my friend Matt the other day. I just uh, walked up and down the streets and Matt and I met in front of a local music store and started chatting, haven't seen each other for a while. And for whatever reason, the conversation moved towards projects and how sometimes projects take very long uh, while other projects uh, are really quick. And what the difference, uh, what difference this can make. And immediately some albums came to my mind that I know had been recorded and mixed in a very quick turnover time in, you know, a day or two. And some of those albums are actually among the most influential and, and most well regarded albums of all times. And uh, yeah, that led us to a little discussion uh, about the time it takes to produce and what that does to us as humans. And we both basically agreed that the longer a production takes, the more painful it starts to become. And uh, that's definitely not a blissful state to be in. It can get very tiring. It can get very exhausting to keep the excitement up, uh, to, to stay engaged and you know stay excited with the music. And, and we both uh, said that there's certain, a certain kind of sweet spot, you know, if, if it takes, if you are too fast, then you know, maybe it wasn't ready for release yet, or maybe it was not good enough. But if you take too long, it also leads to, to overthinking and uh, you can get out of this blissful state. And from there, very rarely good music comes, in my opinion. Um, let me share a story of one of my other friends with you. Um, we met... I guess eight to ten years ago. It could be six. I couldn't even put my finger on the exact year, but it feels at least like six to eight years. And at that time, my friend wanted to move out of his job and do something else. He wanted to work on his album and spend more time on producing his own music because he had great ideas. Uh, definitely a very a talented, promising musician. And then we didn't meet for quite some time and uh, lost contact. And, you know, things happen sometimes in life. And then not too long ago, we met again because my, my mate is uh, working in a local shop. And uh, I just walked into him and we started chatting about life and everything. So eventually I asked how his album is coming along. And his answer was, well, well I'm, I'm still working on it. I'll get it out later this year. Look, actually, I think that was last year when we spoke, but it's still not out. So we've met a couple of times. And yeah, this must be really hard to work on an album for such a long time. And I'm wondering, actually, if what he's working on today is still the same album that we left off with. Maybe not. Maybe he's thrown all the songs in the bin and started from scratch again. And maybe he's done this several times already. And my suspicion is that this is not a good mental state to be in. That's definitely not a place of happiness. To me, this sounds like a place of frustration and uh, possibly fighting an uphill battle. So where is that coming from? Why, why is this album not out? Can you think about somebody you know who might be in a similar boat? When I chatted to Matt, we immediately came up with a couple of, of names uh, of, of other musicians and sometimes ourselves where we could think about situations where we worked on something for too long. And it's it's a weird phenomenon. Uh, when, when you start, when people start a music production, usually it starts with a great idea. And then you start laying some ideas down and performing and hitting record. And what you basically do is you, you take a snapshot. It's like a still image, like a photograph of the musician that you are at that point in time or you know the, the band that you were at this point of time in recording however as human beings we move on we evolve we get better we change uh, we change our angles we learn new music we get better at playing we get better at producing so if you open up a recording that you did let's say five years ago or a little bit earlier, what might have been super exciting to you at that time may not be exciting to you anymore. And that's because you've moved on. And I think that when a music production takes for way too long, what we capture is no longer a sharp picture of this musician at that moment in time, but instead it's a long image it's as if it was overexposed as, as if the shutter time was way too long and what we get now is a blurry image where you know some things are 
at a certain state, but the mind has moved on and is already in a new state. And that, in my opinion, is, is not a blissful state to be in and not a good place to record in. So I hope you can relate to this. Um, so what basically happens is that at the beginning you get excited and the ideas, you know, they come out of you. And when you listen back, you know, you might go, wow, that's phenomenal. You know, you're stunned. But trust me, this excitement is going to fade and it will fade for every one of us. And I think what I'm trying to say here is, and that's why I started the episode off with uh, productivity, is that our job is to be a fast enough producer to get the project to the finish line before we run out of excitement. I think that's the real job of a producer, whether you produce yourself or somebody else. And this is in stark contrast to, to the typical pursuit of perfection in music production. And in an early episode, we came across the saying that goes along the lines of perfection is the opposite of done. And there is some truth to it. So in other words, the sweet spot at which it's time to finish a project is probably a moment when there are still some minor rough edges, but it's time to call it a day and move on. And, and that is a difficult balance to get. And I guess, you know, everybody has a different perception here. But what can help with the entire process is, is to make yourself aware when you start to overcook things and to maintain a really positive mindset towards your music all the time. So that's important because if you don't feel really positive about your music, how is the listener supposed to feel positive about your music? I sometimes think we producers need to be five times as, as excited so that the listeners actually get the excitement as well. And if you've ever spent um, a couple of days on the computer, let's say editing and doing tasks like this, how excited are you at the end of it? my suspicion is is not very so there are certain parts in music production that lead us down a very repetitive slow workflow i've been in those situations as well and i know what it feels like to do let's say um, timing correction using beat detective for you know a, a somewhat sloppy drum performance and if you do need to do this for an entire album you're looking at days and days and days of chopping and that can be really frustrating it takes a lot of strength to to soldier on and get through it and get good results in in timely fashion um, and i guess what i'm trying to say is that we all need to look at our music production workflows very carefully with, with the thought in mind that we shouldn't drag it out for too long. We need to identify moments when we waste time. And one of those moments could be that, I don't know, you get caught into a certain production routine. Let me just come up with an example. Let's say editing toms. So you figured out that the noise gates start to misbehave. So you take the editing tools and you chop all the, the spill away so that only the toms remain. And then you go into the fading. And then after compressing them, the fades sound a bit awkward. So you need to go in again. And wow, this is a really lengthy process. This can feel like an uphill battle, like something that really chews your time and you don't get much done. So this is the moment when we need to stop for a moment, when we need to take a pause. And this is one of those moments when we need to feed our brain some of that, well, recreational activity that we spoke about at the beginning of the episode, when it's time to put the mouse down, shut the computer down and get out for a moment, go for a walk, go for a run at the beach if you can, do something like that. And then come back and ask yourself, okay, is it really worth fighting to you know, cut through this big mountain of work? Or is there an easier way around? What if I don't edit the toms? What other options are there? Why did my noise gate misbehave? Maybe I need to try a different one. Do they need gating at all? Um, what other methods are there? And if you need ideas, maybe just speak to your friends and uh, your fellow music producers and just ask what everybody else is doing. Because... Once you identify these time-wasting activities that are just so draining, you get more work done with the things that really count. Because in all honesty, if you look at the end result of, of a song, 
Are the toms going to make a huge difference? Well, I guess it's it's important to mix a good tom sound, but it shouldn't be an uphill battle. It shouldn't be time consuming. It shouldn't feel like like you you're wasting your time here. And if you do, then think about your workflows and think about what other things you can do to steer yourself back onto a track where you get a lot of work done quickly so that you finish this project while you're still excited about it, while you're still fresh about it, and before it fades into the later time of the production where things can get a drag. Okay, and, and please don't forget about our Production Talk podcast community on Facebook, which is also a fantastic place to ask questions and let everybody know if you get stuck somewhere and ask for suggestions of how to overcome these things. You can, of course, also reach out to me directly. When it comes to production workflows, um, I've pretty much tried everything that I could possibly think up. And uh, many of those workflows I've abandoned because I found better ways. So in many ways, I may be able to suggest uh, faster, quicker routines uh, and workflows if uh, you get stuck somewhere. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me directly as well. That's, of course, always welcome. I'm always happy to hear from you guys. So while we're on the subject of uh, dragging projects on for too long, possibly too long, hopefully not, uh, let's think about how we get better and uh, I came across a little story on the internet and I had to do a little bit of research to find it again. It turns out it's a parable from the book Art and Fear. And I just try to phrase it in my own words, but it's effectively a teacher. I think uh, they teach pottery or ceramics who divides a class into two groups uh, just by random chance, a quantity group and a quality group. And tasks one group with making the perfect piece of pottery, while the other group is tasked with producing as much pottery as possible. And, well, let's cut straight to the chase. There's a good chance you've heard this story before. When the time was up, interestingly, the group who produced quantity produced also the better quality. In other words, by finishing up projects quickly, 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 and always starting new projects, they automatically got better effortlessly, although they didn't even try to be better. They tried to produce more. And uh, the same story has then been translated later to photography, where the same principle seems to apply. And I think the this story also applies very well to songwriting, to music performance, to uh, live shows, being good at live shows, to music production, to mixing, probably even to mastering. And what we can take from this story is that it's really not about getting your debut album to sound as fantastic as, as the most uh, influential records in the world. If you find yourself um, being caught in this pursuit of perfection uh, workflow that makes it hard to finish projects, let me make a suggestion to you. Find the most influential artist that you really love and the records that you really, really appreciate. There's a very good chance those are the later works of, of their career. Now rewind and go back to the very, very earliest release you can find. It could be the first album, but see, maybe there is a demo floating around from rehearsal times from earlier. And listen to those. You will find quite a different artist. They've all started somewhere. Nobody has released that fantastic record with their very first debut album. That's usually very un unlikely might have happened uh, once or twice, but I don't think this is a common thing. And let me give you some examples for that. So uh, one of my all-time favorite artists is Bob Marley, and I think um, his album Confrontation, which was his last album, contains some of the best songs, such as Buffalo Soldier or Black Man Redemption. I think, in my opinion, reggae music doesn't get much better than that. But at the same time, if you then look back at his early days and look at songs like One Cup of Coffee or Judge Not, then you'll hear very different Bob Marley. And obviously it was a different time in his career. And at this stage, nobody could have possibly foreseen just how far he would get. Another great example is Miles Davis, who just put out records like crazy. I think over the course of his career, he released probably over 60 records 
and I mean full albums, and not every single one was fantastic. But among those records was Kind of Blue, which in my personal opinion is probably the best jazz album ever released. Again, a lot of quantity and with that came quality. To sum all of this up, I guess what I'm trying to say is that when it comes to uh, finishing up music, to releasing music, producing music, uh, you will find thousands of people who are very happy to start projects. People who start projects are a dime a dozen. However, people who are good at finishing projects, they are hard to find. And this is what I suggest you focus on. Be the person, be the person who is known to get projects to the finish line. Fast, effective, high quality. And again and again and again. That's where the money is. And now that uh, these words resonate through my mind, I just came to realize that I guess the reason why my clients, uh, my mixing clients come back to me might not even be the quality of my mixing itself. And it might even be that I'm just guiding them to the finish line and sometimes help and push a little bit when it needs to be and help them to make decisions. So maybe that's what it's all about, getting projects to the finish line. So everybody is on a learning curve and the people who get to the very top, they just keep going, they just keep going, they just don't give up. They finish an album and work on the next one and finish it and work on the next one. And that's how you eventually become really good and also effective and fast at producing really good music. It is not a workflow that you can achieve in one step over a long period with lots and lots and lots of, of hard work and effort. That's not the way to do it. It's just too hard on yourself. I think this is a good moment to, to call it a day for this episode. It's a short one. I hope that's okay with you because I think there was so much valuable information in this for myself and I hope for some of you as well that uh, I think we should just leave it just as it is. So um, I hope to speak to you again in a week's time. In the meantime, please visit me at mixartist.com.au and in our Production Talk podcast community. Find us there, please join. The link is in the show notes. And thank you very much for listening. Speak to you in a week. <laughs>